Welcome back. Now we have learned three different methods to perform crossover for permutation representations and we actually had a look at a Java implementation of one of them uh, that was the um, uh, order one crossover method. In this video and the next few ones we will learn several mutation methods and we will also see um, a simple Java implementation for each of them. The first one is uh, the insert mutation. Remember we're doing now permutation representation and the idea for mutation as we mentioned before is that we only have one input, so one parent. We change the elements inside that uh, parent. We basically change their order um, and then um, use them in our population. So for insert mutation the idea is we have one input, one parent, we pick two elements at random and we move the second element to follow the first, so to be right next to the first element and we shift the rest of the elements along so we can accommodate uh, the second element when we bring it to become next to the first element. Notice that this method preserves most of the order and the adjacency information, so not, not much order is changed here. So if we look at an example, let, uh, let's assume that our input chromosome looks like this, uh, an array of integers from 1 to 3 all the, way, all the way up to 9, and the two random numbers we choose, or the two random elements, are maybe index 1 and index 4. Notice that we start with index 0 here, so index 0, index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Assuming that the, uh, ran the first random index is 1, the second random index is 4, what we do is we shift that 5 to become next to the 2, so after 2 and then we just push these elements to the right as you can see here. So bring the 5 to be next to the 2 and then push these elements to the right so we can accommodate the 5 to come here. The Java implementation looks like this. We have a method here called insert mutation. Um, we receive only one parent array of integers. Remember that we use arrays here just for demonstration and teaching purposes. Usually we would use lists because they are more flexible. So what I'm doing here is I'd like to make a copy of the array and then work on that copy and then return uh, the changed one. So I'll just preserve the input. We can of course, as you know, uh, I'm sure you know how Java works, we can work immediately on this uh, um, array and then we don't have to uh, return a value. This can be uh, void and the change will automatically happen on the input array. Anyway, so we make a copy of that array, we get its length, how many elements it has, and then we get two random integers between 0 and the size of the array. So two, in two random indices, R1 and R2. I have a method here called random number. It generates a random integer between 0 and L minus 1. So L here is not inclusive, right from 0 to L minus 1, R1, R2, and then here I have a while loop just to make sure that R1 is less than R2. We don't want R1 to be equal to or larger than R2 because as we mentioned here, this is R1, this is R2. We want to bring the element at R2 to come here be next to the element at R1. So uh, we do that, make sure that R1 is less than R2. And then what we do is we start at, we loop through the elements, we start at the element at R2 minus 1, yeah, and we make sure that our index is larger than R1 because we don't want to touch R1, and then we just go backwards. That's why we decrease the, uh, we decrease I here. So what we do is we start here at R my, I2 minus 1, and then we go left. That's why we decrease I. So what we do is, we start here, we swap these two elements, so the 4 comes here, 5 comes here, that's in one iteration. In the next iteration, now we have 3 and 5, 5 comes here and 3 goes there and that's it. That's what this code does. We just get the element at i plus 1 in a temporary variable, and then we just swap it with the element before it, right? Remember that, i and i plus 1. I, we start in the third iteration, R, I is equal to R minus, I'm sorry, I2 minus R2 minus 1, which means that I plus 1 is actually the element at R2, so that's the beginning. 
we swap R2, element at R2, with the element R2 at R2 minus 1. In the next iteration, we swap the element at R2 minus 1 with the element at R2 minus 2 and so on and so forth. And that way, we can shift this element one by one to come here. We stop at R1 because, as we mentioned, the R here is larger than R1. Right? I hope the idea makes sense. In the next couple of videos, we'll have a look at uh, uh, more uh, mutation methods. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.